hydraulic disc brake install part two. Um, first things first, I did look and yes, the rear is 180. So I had to double check and I want to make sure these compat these rotors are compatible with the new brakes and they are. I guess they call it ice technology. It, so the brakes are ice technology compatible and these are compatible. I have no real idea what that means, but I have a feeling it has to do with the brake pads and the rotor combination and how well they work together. So I will keep this rotor on here and not change that out, but I might as well update the front one. I want to just, if anything, do it for experience. I don't necessarily think the rotor needs replacement, but front rotors do get a lot more wear and usage than the rear on bikes because this is where 75-80% of your braking power comes from. If you don't know that, I'll go over it in another video sometime and explain it because I just now thought that maybe I should talk about that a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to get started here and see how far I get before I decide to end this video and go to part three. So first things first, it's going to be to remove the front wheel, um, take off grips, things like that. Let's get to it. This part's pretty straightforward. Removing the front wheel. <clears throat> so looking at this, there's like a lock ring on the outside that looks like that'll just come off with a tool. Um, I'm curious to know if an existing um, tool that I have will already um, do that. I'm going to guess maybe a bottom bracket removal tool looks pretty close to the same size. So let's check that out. And just like I thought, my wheels manufacturing uh, bottom bracket tool fits right on there. So basically, I just grab those teeth. Should come off. Yep. <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> Boom. <laughs> now I'm just guessing that the disc will just come right off. So that's pretty slick. That's actually a lot easier than dealing with the six bolts of a typical disc setup. So I'm already liking this. Um, I'll take a look at this thing. Uh, I'll probably keep it around. <laughs> uh, mainly I'm doing this so I can learn, but um, while I'm also doing it, I'm going to do some cleaning in here. And I'm sure you don't want to sit there and watch me clean all the Cayuna dirt off of these parts. Okay, the next step is, is to get in here and remove the grip. Pretty easy to do. You just undo this one bolt. Grip comes off. I don't know if I've talked a lot about these Ergon grips. Uh, I really like them. Um, and yeah, they're comfy. Now I will take off the caliper. Um, I'm not 100% sure if this is the order I want to do this in. Uh, might actually be easier to work with the cable with the caliper still on there. But one thing I want to look at, so I want to take this off, get it at the right angle, and then it, there we go. Okay, <clears throat> so now it's off. Um, I want to see how Oh, okay. It actually looks like, now that I'm looking at it, that this dropper lever will mount using this little internal plate. So the more I look at this, the more I think the XT brakes will actually accept 
this because it does have an opening there and I think I can just pull this off, stick the plate in and attach this to the other lever. So if that's the case, at least for now I can do this, but I still want a uh, um, wolf tooth dropper lever. <clears throat> Since this is the front, I'm gonna dismount. I know what size I need. I think I need the other wrench. It's kind of interesting just diving in and taking a bike apart. <laughs> um, I do this with a bit of confidence because I've taken bikes apart enough times to where I'm, and I know I'm mechanically inclined enough to figure out how things work. Not all people are that confident, but I generally pull it off somehow and figure things out on my own. Um, if worse comes to worse, there's this place I've heard about called uh, YouTube. Um, it's this video uh, service that you can go online and, all right, just kidding, <laughs> of course. Okay, that has come off. Make sure I don't drop pieces. Get the, yep, okay, get this little plate out of here. Aha, now the dropper post, or the dropper lever, sorry, is separate from the brake lever. But what I do is I put this stuff back together. This is one of those things I've learned over time is that if I was to just set this little piece down somewhere and not reassemble this, that's how I lose stuff. And I want to remember that this goes with that. So I'm going to thread this piece back on there. It's like that. Just to temporarily hold on to that. And now when I go to put this on the other lever, it's there. I'm going to clear this out of the way. Get it out of here. Now all I have left to deal with is the front brake. So there's a little clamp here on my fork and I believe find the right size for that. See how this works. This again I have no idea how this little piece works but there's a screw here so I'm going to undo it. I'm assuming this comes off somehow. The cable can come out of there. So uh, the thing when you're dealing with hydraulic cables and brakes is they're not so it's not so easy to uh, take them off. So yeah, this little piece. So I'm gonna have to remember to put this clamp on the next cable. I mean, it is just plastic and it bends a little bit. So maybe I can just. Oh yeah, no, I can. I can snap it on there. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say if this was metal or something and I wasn't able to just bend it around, then I would need to um, make sure I remember to put this on the other front brake. Again, a thing that I did like to do is I'm going to go ahead and re thread this onto the fork a little bit. Because if I go set that down somewhere, I just want it. I want enough threads on there where it's not going to fall off of there. There. Now that's detached. Let's take off the front. <laughs> okay, now that I have the dropper lever removed from the brake lever, and I got this little dealie on the fork removed um, from the cable or the cable removed from it, I can now go right at the brake and I can just remove the brake. Right here. So this one, and the other one. Make sure I don't drop washers and lose bits and pieces, right? It's got 
that Loctite stuff on it. That's what the blue stuff is that you'll sometimes see. Sometimes it's red, but blue is the, the stuff you'll see on bikes. All right, I'll get this in the view of the camera. So the whole brake is removed from the bike. Uh, the nice thing about this is that um, I, I don't have to detach this or do anything with this. So when I go put this on another bike, and I believe I said I was gonna do the low side, I can easily just attach this to the low side as is. I don't have to deal with fluid or anything. That's what makes the front brake easy. <laughs> when we get to the rear, it's not gonna be quite so easy. Okay, so that's going to be part two. I'm going to keep it pretty much short and sweet. Um, what I did, remove front wheel, removed the front rotor from the wheel, removed the grip, removed the dropper lever from the brake lever. In this case, they're attached to each other and got everything all set up. I'll do a little cleaning here because it's always a good opportunity when you have parts removed that you can get in and clean. And then it'll be ready for the front brake install. So I'm gonna go through the entire front brake before I go to the rear brake. Cool. Really appreciate your support for my channel. Please like and subscribe. Peace.